So on my stream a little while ago, I set a sub goal that if we got enough subs, I would rewrite my entire NeoVim config. It had grown quite large and sort of accumulated a lot of things over the year. Um, you can sort of see there's just a lot of files that used to be here. We check how many lines of code. There's like several thousand. And some of those are from experiments that I had or different things that I was trying over the years. So it wasn't like all of it was running necessarily every time I opened up NeoVim. But I thought it might be kind of fun to have a, a new start at this. And also along the way, sort of walk you through what I did, uh, some of the things that I like that are sort of personal to me, and maybe just see where we got. Now, this took a little bit longer than it would have otherwise because along the way I thought, What's better than rewriting my NeoVim config? Building a system to make it more difficult to rewrite my NeoVim config. Um, so actually we built an entire thing on stream in Elixir first time, very fun project, where basically uh, chat can connect and send random events that sort of uh, hurt me and make me sad. You can see that's why I say start misery here. And if I do something like send a random color scheme, it's going to switch to a random color scheme. We can do a lot of other stuff. We can make uh, things invisible or we can do fog of war. There's lots of good ideas that we have sort of going on inside of here. So you'll see in a few seconds as, as this time turns out. So we had quite a good time sort of building this whole project, uh, but that's sort of just like a side aspect of what's going on. Oh, here you go. You can see the Invisalign action here. It makes the current line invisible. It doesn't actually kill them or anything. It just makes it so I can't see what I'm typing. That made it a little bit more difficult to write the config but we had a lot of fun we got to explore we also wrote goofy things like this where you sort of have this like spyglass fog of war situation you can always see the files around here anyways so if that interests you at all you can come hang out on twitch twitch.tv slash tj underscore dv of course and uh we do lots of goofy stuff like that all the time but the rest of the video is really just going to be focused on some of the new config and i'm going to post a few subsequent videos that sort of give an overview of different aspects of the config so here we go. Uh, the first thing to go over is our init.lua where everybody always starts. And my init.lua is usually very simple now with uh, with how lazy it sort of leads you to be able to structure different parts of your project. Um, your problem, you might be familiar with Kickstart Envim, where we sort of went for a single file approach, which I think is really nice for when you're starting out. I personally like the split file approach because it's really easy to sort of hop between the different things that I might want to do, right? If I want to check out my, you know, telescope config, I can hop to the telescope file. That'll tell me all the things that I need to do, right? As, and then I can hop back to where I was. I really like that as sort of a, a way to split up the config. And so lazy sort of makes that really easy to do. So for example, this part here is just what you copy from the lazy config, which all it does is says, hey, do we not have this lazy file? If we don't, then let's uh, download it. And then we need to basically tell NeoVim, here's where you can find lazy, right? NeoVim doesn't know where to look for this lazy Lua file until you've prepended or sort of added this to the runtime path. If you want more info on that, of course, you can go to your favorite spot, help runtime path here and it'll tell you what it means and sort of how things are loaded and how to structure projects generally this is actually pretty much all you need to know to write a lua plugin as well but that's a story for another video i think so once we have that though we can tell lazy instead of doing all of the config in one big file here instead what i'd really like for you to do is i want you to look inside of lua custom plugins for all of the plugins that i want to store so a really simple one here is if we just open up the beginning one, I, I have a local OCaml plugin that I'm working on and exploring some ideas there. OCaml, by the way, we're writing some OCaml on stream right now. And so I just tell Lazy, hey, uh, make sure you load this local file for me. A more interesting one might be um, LSP, where I tell it, hey, I need NeoVim LSP config. We've got some dependencies here, you know, NeoDev, Mason, some of these other ideas that I sometimes use and sometimes don't, but they're, they're at least interesting to explore. And then you can set up the config. Now I have a mix of two and I haven't decided which one I like better so far. 
for how I'm setting things up. Some of these files, I actually put the config inside of this big function here, but other ones, especially ones that I sort of want to rapidly iterate on, I want to test out different options and do a few things like that. I found it much nicer to actually do something like this, where I put my plugin sort of declaration, all the things that I need for the plugins inside of my Lua custom plugins uh, telescope file here, but then I do my configuration in this custom telescope file. What's nice about this is it's very easy to reload this file. You can just type source percent, it'll execute this file again. We can prove that by saying print uh, subscribe after liking, smiley face, right? And if I run this, it'll, it'll print this again. So I can test out different key maps or different options or different types of things that I might wanna do without closing and reopening NeoVim over and over, assuming that I'm not adding or removing a plugin entirely, right? This, this really lets me quickly iterate on, oh, I wanna try setting up this or this different option. I can do that really fast. So that's sort of the main structure of how plugins work for my current config. I put it in my init Lua here, and I say where I wanna import them from. And then inside of this custom plugins, I have a bunch of different files that are configurations for the larger groups of plugins that I'm doing. Now there's one other spot that I think is really important to go over in sort of an overview video like this, which is that you can put things in after. And now I'm using here after, I'm using an FT plugin. People sometimes wonder how do I set particular mappings or config options or whatever for particular file types. And I think the easiest way to do that is with FT plugins. So if you're looking here, right, we're in my NeoVim project here and then I'm in after an FT plugin, you can put stuff in after just to say that you'd like it to run after. And I have a video talking about this longer, but the short answer is I have a few settings like I generally use sort of like shift with two in C files. I don't like how O works generally speaking in C. And so I can set up a few different things like custom key mapping. So this is inside of go. I want to run a test. So it's like test debug. I want this key map to only be for Go files, right? I actually don't want this key map to even be available to me if I was inside of, you know, a Rust or OCaml or whatever other kind of file. I only want this to show up when I'm in Go. And so I really like to do different things like this all in sort of one spot in the FD plugin for that language. I find that strategy really, really helpful. The only other place that I really do any interesting configuration at the start of my NeoVim config is inside of plugin. And remember, any file that you put inside of plugin, so remember, not FT, which stands for file type, FT plugin, plugin just runs at the beginning of NeoVim. And so this will run after your lazy config is loaded and everything, but I set up a lot of my key maps. Some of these I think are pretty useful, like I prefer having just uh, control and the motion keys to be able to move around between splits because I, I use splits pretty regularly. There's a few other nice ones like this leader X for me will just execute the current line X for execute, of course, <laughs> that's how you'd spell it. And then leader leader X runs the whole file, right? So if I wanna just run this line, I just do leader X. Um, it doesn't have set inside of here right now, so that doesn't really work. So generally speaking, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna run the whole file. So this just ran the whole file again, right? I can say print high. This is how I did this earlier too. It just runs source. Um, and so that's a good, those two are pretty useful as you're iterating on your config uh, inside of Lua. Um, the, the only other ones that I think are sort of interesting is people often ask me, how do I resize splits? Um, because on stream, you, you sometimes might see me do this, where I can move these really quickly. Or if I have something here, then I can go taller and shorter. These are some key mappings that you might like that I think are, are pretty helpful. Um, this, this looks very goofy, but this is really just alt plus um, the like less than but I, I don't press shift, right? So that's just actually comma for me, might be different on your keyboard. But so that lets me hold down alt and easily move this left and right five spots at a time. I don't need to move them one at a time, right? Five is fine. And then for me, <laughs> I have taller and shorter. 
it's whatever works in your brain to remember stuff, right? So I can press Alt T and Alt S for taller and shorter, and that moves things up and down in splits. That lets me move those pretty quickly and pretty easily, which which I like. Um, and, and you can sort of see these same ideas along the way. Uh, like I mentioned, this is just loading up sort of this misery situation. You can ignore this one. Um, if you don't know ink command, I did think, I, I don't think I've ever really even mentioned this as a big thing. It is so cool to be able to type what you're going to do here and then type uh, cool live loading. Whoops like live loading like this and just have it show. And it even works if you did something like, oh, I want to capture opt like this and then I want to substitute it back in. I want to do it again. It, it, like it just does whatever it's going to do to the buffer live for you, which is really nice for substitutes and it does a few other things as well, but a big fan of that one. Um, otherwise sort of just setting a few initial options, which I think is easy. And then I just have some options for myself for managing things with terminals, which is mostly like, Hey, I want to open these up and do some stuff like that. So that's pretty much the basic structure of the config. What I'll do in some follow-up videos here is that I really want to show you just I don't know, little tips and tricks of some of the stuff that I did as we were building these, and you'll be able to pick them up as, as you like them. If you like this style of video of me just sort of talking through some ideas about NeoVim, let me know. I can make a lot more of these videos than, uh, than sort of the longer presentations. So yeah, let me know. Leave a like. Uh, of course, subscribe. Smash! the bell and uh, leave a nice comment if you want or leave a mean comment and I'll try and be nice back anyways because I think it's cool to be nice. Thanks everybody. I'll see you later.